I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne, for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. If you know it, help me sing it. Hallelujah. I lift, I lift my hands in total adoration to you. You reign, you reign on the throne for you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more than anything. I just want to say, I just want to say that I love you more than anything because i love you jesus i worship and adore you just want to tell you lord i love you more than anything Come on, let's lift that up in this place. Say, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I worship it. I worship it. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you.
love you more than anything cause you love me first yeah Lord I love you I love you more than anything one more time say Lord I love you more than anything yeah 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 come on let's worship him Lord we love you because you first loved us Lord we thank you for your love Lord we thank you for your love God your love it keeps me God your love it protects me come on your love your love is good yeah yeah God, we love you. God, we love you. God, we love you. Oh, Lord, we worship you. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Our soul make his boast to you, Jesus. Our soul make his boast to you, Jesus. God, we love you today. God, we love you today. Mighty God, you are King of kings and Lord of lords. One more time. I love you, Jesus. I, I worship by the door. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love you, Jesus. I worship you. I worship and the door you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Oh, hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we worship you. God, we worship you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Hallelujah. God, we worship you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. 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 Ooh. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you love Jesus today? Hallelujah. God, we bless your name. You are sovereign. You're holy. You are righteous. You're majestic. Yes, Lord. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The King of kings we magnify you, King Jesus, today. Our souls make us boast in you alone, King Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I just love that song. I just love that song. Minister Joe, man, you did an awesome job. Phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Amen. That's a blessing. That was a blessing. Because we never would have made it if it had not been for him on our side. Would have never made it this far by faith. We could have lost our minds. But because of Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. His grace covers us. His mercy keeps us all because he loves us unconditionally. That is so awesome to know that God is on our side. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's a scripture I want to go to. I have several scriptures, but I'm going to this one in Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If you could stand for the reading of the scripture. 
you will please. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. <clears throat> and it reads as follows I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. You may be seated. If I was to use a subject today, it would be run the race with a purpose. Run the race with a purpose. Because we're living in a time and a season where we're running a race against the pandemic. Every day people are fighting for their lives and they're persevering it pushing forward, trying to overcome different challenges and obstacles in their lives. And we have to be reminded that this race is one is going to require some strength. Because I've never seen an athlete engage in a race without preparation. You have to exercise lift weights in some cases, strengthen your legs, get your stride, so practice running daily until you build the momentum that you can run the way you want to run. And as we're in this race, Solomon is writing, he says, I return and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift. So it doesn't matter how fast you run in this race. We all as believers are in a race with God. He put us in this race. And at the end of the race, there's a prize. The reason why Paul said, I press towards the mark for the prize of God in the high calling in Christ Jesus. Because there's a higher calling. Not only is there a higher calling, but the end of life's journey, there's a prize. And that's an eternal reward. We will get a crown of righteousness, a crown of glory. We'll be seated in the end time, in a place where we can sit with Jesus Christ, our King, for eternity. And in this race, I was thinking about the Olympics that just passed. And at the Olympics, there were various runners, and the track has seven lanes. And each person is positioned in their lane, striving to reach the finish line. And the one that's in the seventh ending of the lane may look like they're the furthest away in the race. But because of the mentality and the training, they believe in themselves, I might be in the seventh place, but I can get to the first place. The enemy knows that in the midst of a race, how to put obstacles, how to put distractions, how to put trials in your pathway to hinder you from completing your race. But it, there takes a determination within yourself that it doesn't matter what comes my way. I know that I can make it because God promised me he would lead me to the finish line. The reason Paul said, I fought a good fight, I finished my course, not only that for me now, it's a crown of righteousness. Because he knew that in the process, I'm going to have to fight some devils. In this race, I'm going to have to fight some demons. Because there can be some strongholds, there can be some habits, there can be some addictions, there can be the things the enemy plants in your way to distract you from getting to the finish line. And God says in this race, it's not to the swift or how fast you're going in this race, nor to the battle to the strong. Some people think that I have to be real strong to finish this race. Some people feel like I have to be really fast to finish this race. But in God's race, in a natural race, you need those abilities. You need those qualities. But in God's race, God says it's not about how fast and how swift you are. 
It's not about how much knowledge you know. It's not about the strategies and the plans you have to complete this race. It's about you enduring to the end. Because you got some weak folks in the race. But the Bible tells us, God said, let the weak say, I'm strong in the Lord. Because in the midst of your inability, he gives you the ability to advance in the race. And we got to get to the place where we recognize that it's not about how fast I can go, but if I can make it across the finish line. Because we all have a goal that's Christ Jesus to get to the finish line of the race. But in the process, I got to get to the place of my spiritual exercise. And the reason I said it because bodily exercise profit is little. The word tells us that. So I may have been exercising my fleshly man, but he says that's only for the external use of the body. But if I exercise my spiritual body with the equipment he gave me, which is his word, Guess what? It profits a lot. Because the word of God gives you the ability to achieve what you can't do in the natural. The devil deceives so many people in the body of Christ to make them think that you're never going to get to the end. I'm going to stop you in midstream of the race. See, the one thing about the race, there's no shortcuts. There's no shortcuts in God's race. There's no tipping and slipping in God's race. I'm reminded of a story. We talked about this on the radio the other day. About the tortoise and the hare. We all know the little nursery rhyme story about the tortoise and the hare. They both get into preparation to run a race. And the tortoise, he doesn't move fast. He's wise. He's crafty. He's skilled. And he goes at the pace he can go with his own ability. Catch what I just said there. So he's moving very slowly. So the enemy comes along, which is the hare, and begins to tell you, you ain't going to make it to the finish line. I'm going to get there before you get there because I'm faster than you are. So just because you may have the ability to move very fast, you're still moving slow. Somebody missed that one. Just because you have the ability to move very fast, you're still moving slow in the eyes of God. Because the hare, if you know the story, he went on his journey trying to get to the finish line. He sat out for a little while on the sideline. He took a break. He, you know, he felt like, oh, no, I got this in my hand. I got the ability to finish this race. I can make this thing to the end because I'm the hare. I'm the fastest one in the race. Be not deceived. For God is not mocked. What's a man saw it, that she they also reap, right? So the so the hare, he's taking his time, doing a little shortcuts and doing what you want to do, and not paying attention. Pay attention now. You're not paying attention when you're not paying attention. Did y'all catch that? <laughs> Speak holy ghost. So you got to get in the word of God in order to pay attention. Because the word of God will equip you with the ability to say, you know what? Just because some things get in the way, just because the enemy whispers in your ear, say, you know what? You can go a little tipping and slipping over here. You can go over there and do what you want to do. You can get into the, your, to the place of a comfort zone in the race, and, and God's still going to take you over the cross line. That's a lie. Because if you're not trusting in God's ability, whose ability are you trusting in? If you're not standing on the word of God, what are you relying on? Think about it. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 says, Know ye not that they which run in a race all run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that ye may obtain. So the word of God lets you know that just because in the Olympus everybody running trying to get this prize. Right? 
in God's Olympics, he has already designed for the winners because he knows that in the natural race, only one gets a prize, but in God's race, everybody gets a prize. So he said, you got to keep on running. He didn't say sit down and rest and stop when you feel like it. I have never seen nobody in a race just stop because I'm tired. I never seen somebody in a race say, I'm thirsty. So they say, well, you know what? I just got to stop. I ain't going to make it. I, I, I'll give up. Quitters never win and winners never quit. All right, all right. And that is a natural principle in life. If you give up too quick when you're at your verge of a breakthrough, you're telling God, God, your grace ain't good enough. But if I'm trusting in God's ability, I'm standing on his word, God says, you know what? I got this. I know you tired. I know you get thirsty. I know you get weary. I know you get some weights on you. I know you get this, get tired and get bitter. You get, all the stuff happening against you makes you just want to say, God, I can't make it. The human nature is prone to do evil. The human nature is prone to quit in the race. But the spirit man is renewed day by day by the word of God through the power of the Holy Spirit. To so say, oh, okay, you know what? You may be tired. You might be frustrated. You might be weary. You might feel like just giving up. But guess what? I'm going to give you that extra adrenaline to push you to the finish line. The Holy Ghost knows our weaknesses, but he knows them very well. He knows every individual got something wrong with them in the race. But God says, I'm going to look beyond your fault. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going to see your need, and I'm going to push you. See, the problem comes that we don't like God pushing us. If I'm in my comfort zone, I don't want nobody messing up my, my organization. We got a lot of folk in the house of God sit in a comfort zone Sunday after Sunday and call us up worshiping God. We got to wake up, church, because God is not playing with us. Just like the hare who took his time, and guess what? The tortoise won the race. Which proves to me that God says, you know what? You might be struggling to get to the finish line. You might be moving real slow. But guess what? My grace is sufficient. My power is perfected in your weaknesses. That you may glory in the power of the cross in your weakness. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, wherefore... Seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. What's your weight? What's holding you back? What's hindering you? He says, and sin which does easily beset us. So the weights and sin work together in your life to stop you from getting to the finish line. But then he says, and let us run with patience. You can't be impatient in God's race. You got to take your time and keep trusting in God's word. Keep consecrating. Keep on praying. Keep on depending on God to carry you in the times you can't carry yourself. And let God know that God, you know what? I get tired. I'm, I'm getting frustrated. I get weary and well doing. But you told me that you're going to continue to give me the strength and the ability to keep moving forward. He said, run the race with patience that is set before us. Glory to God. Then he says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. In other words, you got some witnesses who already done ran this race before you and done passed away and seated in glory. Waiting on you to get there. 
And he says, these witnesses that come past you, they surround you, they're rooting you on. They say, come on, you can make it. Don't stop midstream. Keep on persevering. Keep on moving forward. I, I see the struggle. I see the hardship. I see the disappointments. But you keep on moving forward because I'm ruining it for you to make it to the end. Hallelujah. But then when you get your eyes in the right place, the prize is at the end of the line, which is Jesus Christ. He said, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. In other words, I got to set my focus on the Jesus Christ at the end of my race, who is that prize to welcome me into glory. I got to get to the place to recognize that he suffered for my stead. He endured the shame. He took the punishment and judgment upon himself. Everything that should have been upon me, he took upon himself because he knew I couldn't bear the burden by myself. So he took the pain and anxiety and the stress and the worry and all the mess that tried to hold me back. He took it upon himself. And then Paul tells Timothy, said, Timothy, no man that wars entangle himself with the affairs of this life. See, even in the battle of the race, you're going to have some devils to war with. You're going to have to fight the good fight of faith. You're going to have to keep on pressing forward by faith in the promise of God's word. So that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. You may be a soldier in the army of the Lord today, but I want you to know you're in a race. You're going to keep on striving for the masteries. Yet he is not crowned himself. He strive according to the rules and regulations. God has some laws and decrees. You got to stand on the word of God. You got to know for yourself that I have a crown waiting on me at the end of my journey. You got to know for yourself that the king of kings going to be right there to welcome me in the glory. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I believe that the believers pride to the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and I press forth for those things which are before. See, in the race, you can't hold on to the past failures. Can't hold on to past relationships. Can't hold on to past mistakes. You gotta let go of the junk that's trying to pull you backwards. In the race, there's no reverting backwards. I've never seen somebody run the opposite direction. You gotta keep on running for Jesus. Keep on running in the race. Because God promised me he will be right there to pull me to the end of my journey. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul said to the Corinthian church, you started out running well. But what hindered you from obeying the truth? You got a lot of folk in the house of God. They start out with Jesus. But something happened along their journey, called them to turn away from the truth, abandon their faith in God. But God says, no more shall you be tossed and forth by any spirit of doctrine. You got to know the word of God for yourself. You got to stand on the word of truth and know for God I'm running this race. He going to see me to the end of my journey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will run a good race. But who cut in on you from obeying the truth? See, sometimes we let our friends cut in our race. We let our families cut in our race. We let our jobs cut in our race. We let our money cut in our race. We let our possessions cut in our race. But God says, you can't be distracted by the things of the world anymore because you got to keep on running. Keep on running until you get to the end of your journey. Some believers in Galatia, they lost their faith in God's race. They returned to legalistic religions. So you got folk going to abandon God's word, going to abandon God's system to get to a legalistic system. They're going to run back to the things that make them feel good. A doctor to satisfy their itching ears. They're going to turn from the truth and follow out the lie. But God says today, Many are running the race against the time and with a deadline. What's your deadline today? Think about what's hindering you in your life. What are you trying to achieve in your life? What is at the end of your journey? I don't know about you today, but my race is to see Jesus. 
My race is to see the man who died for me on Calvary's cross. The Bible tells me he hung on the cross from the third to the sixth to the ninth hour. In three days, he stayed in the grave. On the third day, he got up. The third day, he got all power in his hand. The third day, he paid my redemption. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know about you today. I'm tired of falling. I'm tired of making mistakes. But I know one thing. My Redeemer lives. And I'm going to stand with him on that day. Hallelujah. Don't let yourself or anybody begin to cripple you by your mistakes of the past. Because God brought you out for such a time as this. He anointed you. He appointed you. He gave you a higher calling upon your life. That you got to keep on striving. Keep on persevering. Don't quit midstream. For you got to run the race with a purpose. Because the purpose is to see my Savior face to face. Paul said we may see in glass darkly. But soon when he comes, we shall see him in the full of who he is. That's what I'm looking for. That blessed hope. That blessed assurance. That Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I am my Savior. I'm happy and blessed. Because I know in him... My soul's going to rest. I don't know about you today. I get excited about Jesus. Just know he's coming back again. For a church without a spot of blemish. For a church, a lamb without a wrinkle. He's coming back again. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? You got to ask yourself that question. Will I be ready when he comes again? Will he say to me, well done, my good and faithful servant? Or will he say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity? I never knew you. Jesus is coming. As you run in this race, we have a deadline. I call it a lifeline. In Christ Jesus. The world calls it a deadline. But we have a lifeline. That's connected to the vine. We have a lifeline. That gives us the strength and the ability. In the midst of struggles and hardships and pain. We have a lifeline. That tells me. That I can make it. You can make it today. You can make it. You can make it. You got to expect God. To hold your hand while I run this race. And I guarantee if you hold on to his hand, he won't let you go. He says, you're going to make it because I already won the victory. You're going to make it because I already won the victory. The reason Paul wrote in his writing, thanks be to God. Who always, he ain't say sometimes, when he feel like it, when you don't. Says always causes me to triumph. I'm a victor. You're a victor. You're not a victim. You're a victor. You may have been a victim at one time. But God says today, you are a victor. Because he won the victory for you. Why don't you stand with me? Gracious God, our Father. Lord, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, Lord God, for your presence in this place. I thank you, Lord God, for your word. I pray that your word convict all of our hearts. If we're holding on to the past, 
past mistakes, past struggles, past addictions, past relationships, past habits, that we will allow the spirit of the living God to purge it, to purify our hearts, to cleanse our minds from a sin conscious. That you, Lord God, will wash us in the blood of the Lamb. Because we realize, God, I never could have made it if it had not been for you on my side. When they counted me out, they gave up on me. They said, you're no good. You're a failure. You're a drunkard. You're a fornicator. You're an adulterer. You're a liar. You're a whoremonger. When they called us out, God, out of our names, the stuff they said about us, God, you said all you see is the blood. And I thank you, Lord God, for the redemption that we have received through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I ask you now, God, to forgive us for the times we doubted you even in our conversation when we spoke negative words about you God when our actions didn't line up with your word God forgive us and I thank you for the ultimate sacrifice that paid the price for our iniquity for our sin for our waywardness, our stubbornness, our rebellious ways. And I ask you, Lord God, to come into our hearts right now and be our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.